anyway, it's been a great weekend. A very, very beautiful weekend. Hopefully, you all decided to go out, get some fresh air, still practice the social distancing, I'm quite sure. And we are here for another show, Cruising with the Case Handler. And ladies and gentlemen, Adam Handler, my partner here, will be introducing, of course, the team of lawyers that are here to actually represent you when you're ready and mm -hmm. also answer mm -hmm. questions on personal injury and immigration. I am David Squeeze Attic, the businessman. Let me turn this thing down right here, my headphones. All right. And I am here to remind you all to tune in each and every single weekday, 8.30 a.m. for what's called Cruising with a Case Handler, where we talk on personal injury and, yes, immigration. Also on Saturdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 12 noon. Saturdays, we're jumping off a little, early, little bit early, get some calls going just to get Nelson and his team busy over there, you know. And ladies and gentlemen, right now, speaking about calls, before I hand the uh, reins over to Adam Handler, the case handler, the most celebrated personal injury attorney within the community, I would like to remind you all, if you are listening to the show and you need immigration help, let me repeat myself. If you are listening to this show and you need immigration help, you need a consultation. It will be absolutely free if you call us now or before the top of the hour. If you want it to be private and confidential, it still will be. But you got to call us before the top of the hour. It's a Monday, May 4th. This is not a tape. This is for real. This is live. Anybody out there tuning in right now, you need immigration help, I need for you to call this number before the top of the hour. Also, if you get hurt in an accident, slip and fall, construction accident, whatever it may be, you still need to call the same number. So right now, dial this number. The number is, are you all ready? Okay, yeah, thank you so much, Nelson. You will get this free phone consultation, all right? So make the call right now, ladies and gentlemen. The number is 844 774 3529. That's 844 774 3529. This is not some gimmick. This is not some joke. This is not some bluff. This is a 50 year plus law firm giving you free phone consultations off the air privately and confidentially. So make that call. Do like what others have been doing. They'll realize, oh man, these guys are for real. They're real attorneys. So make the call right now and you will get a 100% free consultation. All compliments of yours truly, David Squeeze Anarchy. All compliments of PPID. All compliments of the case handler himself. Make that call right now, 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPID-LAW. 844-774-3529. And we're going to be speaking about the declaration of sufficiency, I think it is, or on the public charge later on. So we're going to be speaking on that. Yeah, you guys should be careful, man, because I tell you what, I'm going to make sure that you, Adam, you, Nelson, you, Conrad, you're all sending me to law school. All right. I'm telling you that I'll sign the contract as soon as I'm done. I'm working with you guys, but you're all paying for my law school. All right. Anyway, let's get over to you, Adam Handler. I'm going to let you introduce this great team, this great legal team that we have right here representing our community, not just with personal injury, not just with immigration, but with a whole lot more. No one has to go anywhere else. One law firm, 50 years plus in New York City. We got your back. Adam, welcome again to the show. Right. Cruising with a case Adler. Good, good morning to you, Squeeze's mustache. How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> I like morning, it. <laughs> you like that, right? I do. I do. Listen, it's right. Monday. Um, and uh, I, I felt like, you know, the, the weather was so nice over the weekend. Why, why not celebrate it? You know, and I've got my pineapple t-shirt on and uh, we're ready to go. Yes, uh, but yeah. you are absolutely right that, you know, this is a law firm. You know, we've been now doing this show in, in this format for, for several weeks now. And it's a law firm that I'm certainly very proud of um, to be a part of part uh, as a partner and um, as a, a coworker and as uh, just somebody that helps run things. And, and especially out here marketing the wonderful services we provide. So, of course, everybody knows your boy, Adam Handler, the case handler for personal injury. Uh, but the firm also has an unbelievable uh, immigration practice, an immigration practice that's been established for decades and decades and decades. 
And uh, if nothing else, I'd like to introduce, of course, uh, my partner, Conrad Pollock, the managing partner of the firm. His father actually started the firm many years ago. And Conrad, as we say, is the most experienced immigration attorney broadcasting on this radio station. There is no doubt it's facts. There is no case that he hasn't seen before or worked on before or his team hasn't seen and worked on before. So what better place, what better person to have on this show schooling us as to the immigration laws, both current, um, upcoming, and the way that they affect our society in general. And with, uh, with him, as always, is uh, Nelson Madrid, the, you know, the top gun when it comes to deportation proceedings. And he's earned the name The Maverick. So we have Conrad Pollock, the maestro, certainly who orchestrates everything here in the immigration department at PPID. And then, of course, The Maverick, the guy that will take that kill shot and make sure that justice is served when you, kill shot your, is right. when you or your family is uh, facing uh, the, uh, the barrel of the immigration gun trying to kick you out of this country. So, Conrad, good morning to you, my brother. How are you? I'm good. Good morning. Uh, beautiful weekend. Beautiful day here. You know, I'm uh, I'm upstate, so I'm uh, sitting out in the uh, countryside here. Uh, basically, nobody around me except the birds and the bees and the geese, <laughs> bears, and so on. But uh, beautiful weekend, beautiful day, and uh, <clears throat> raring to get going. You know, Monday morning is always, yeah, I've said before, it's always tough for me to wake up in the morning. But uh, when the weather's like this, I do pop out of bed. And uh, I'm ready to roll, and uh, I'm ready to answer questions, and ready to provide uh, my, what is it, 35 years of uh, legal experience um, and um, raring to go. Nelson, what do you think? I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Getting ready for Mother's Day next week. All right. uh, great weather. And um, I want to thank all those listeners who have been calling and hopefully we've been answering their questions. And would welcome any new listeners to give us a call and give us a try. And by the way, we have getting an awful lot of calls. Um, it's 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 getting difficult to field them. We have two two uh, of our staff members each weekend now, basically fielding the calls, and you know they're busy. We and we appreciate it. It's great that the community is responding the way they are, and I'm happy that we can provide the services that we're providing. And uh, you know it's a great thing all around. I'm I'm really happy that that, that things are going as well as they are. Seriously. And before and before you, you, you continue, Conrad, Nelson and Conrad, um, you know, I like feedback and I'm quite sure the community likes feedback. So why don't you expound on some of the things that people should be ready to actually give you when they get on the phone to do a phone consultation? Is there anything else you need from the listening community that has been responding so greatly? I mean, any, anything you want to ask them so they can be prepared when they get on the phone with you? Well, typically, uh, it just from my own experience i i always want to know um and, I, and most of the time people are they're calling about family members that they're looking to sponsor you we want to know whether the person who's doing the application is a u.s citizen or whether they have a green card that makes a big difference uh typically citizens are given a, a much uh, bigger preference under the law cases go faster they can sponsor more people um as opposed to permanent residents plus now especially with this ban that uh, that trump put in place permanent residents uh, applying for relatives outside the United States are substantially affected, whereas uh, relatives of U.S. citizens are not, other than their parents. Um, so that's typically, if not the key piece of information I'm looking for, certainly one of them. Plus, we want to know about previous immigration history. The person has had a visa before, if they've ever gotten into trouble with immigration, deportation proceedings, uh, stopped at the border, uh, or fingerprinted on the way in, um, mm -hmm. Or if they've sponsored other people, or if they've been married before, or divorced, or you know, I mean, like every situation is different. Um, but typically, again, we want to know history. We want to know status of the person sponsoring. We want to know how, if they're sponsoring a relative who's in the United States, how did they get here? Did they come with a visa? Did they overstay? Was it a student visa? Was it a tourist visa? Or maybe they never came and they've applied for a visa back in Jamaica and been denied. We want to know why. Or do they have any family here? Or do they have any family there? I mean, Again, it depends on the circumstances, but there are always a lot of details involved. You know, part, part of um, the being an attorney for as long as I have, as long as Nelson has, you know, you learn to, you've heard most of the questions before. So you, I, I feel like a lot of times I know the person question before they even ask it. 
You know what I mean? And I know the type of information that's required just as the first couple of words out of their mouth. Uh, Got to be a U.S. citizen. Or no, you can't sponsor your nephew or, you know, something like that. You know, it's just, it, it's just it's automatic at this point. I roll out of bed, you know, maybe my wife kicks me out of bed. But, you know, I, I get up spouting immigration law, you know. <laughs> so uh, that's that's where I come in. What do you think, Nelson? You know, just to add to, I completely agree with you, but uh, just to add to that, um, especially for people who are traveling outside of the United States or interested in applying for citizenship, what I want to know is when did you get your green card? How did you get your green card? Yep. You know, a lot of people also have this misconception, you know, um, while I was convicted, but it wasn't a felony, I, I still need to know what you were convicted of. You know, also arrests, you know, I have six arrests. Well, what were they for? You know, right. just minor charges. No, I need to know exactly what you were arrested for, how that case was ultimately concluded, because that could potentially have an effect on your immigration status. Um, just to add very quickly, being a permanent resident is a privilege. What does that mean? That means that if you are convicted or charged with certain crimes, or if you are outside of the United States for an extended period of time, immigration can try to take away your green card. And often these days will. So th this is all information pertinent to your case, important for us to know, because obviously that's what we're going to base our advice on. You know, um, if you tell me you've been arrested once, you can lie to me. Immigration will know the truth. And if you get stuck abroad, you know, don't blame me. Blame yourself for not telling me that, in fact, you were arrested five times instead of one. You know, I gave you advice based on one arrest that you disclosed to me. If there was more, you know, obviously, I'm not going to know about that. Absolutely. Once again, folks, you heard from the attorneys, Conrad Pollock a managing partner at the firm, and there's absolutely no one out there that knows as much immigration knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, as this man, Conrad Pollock. You have also got Nelson Madrid. We call him the top gunner. I call him the gunner. Anybody out there who have ever been arrested and you're seeking to, of course, handle your immigration situation, you need only one attorney. That attorney is Nelson Madrid. We call him the maverick. He's your top gunner. All right? Pun evidently intended there. All right, so make sure you reach out to the law firm, PPID. PPID is at 2225 Broadway on the third floor. And right now, if you call before 9 a.m., I will guarantee you, they will guarantee you a 100% free private consultation on the phone, okay? So call them right now, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774. 774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Maybe you don't need the help. So do, do the good deed for today. Okay? Note the number and text the number now to someone that you believe needs it. This is a great program. It's called Cruising with the Case Handler. We speak on immigration. And now we're hopping over to personal injury talk. And I want for you all to listen. Call now for the immigration consultation, which is free. That's 844-774-3529. Now, Adam Handler, the case handler, is a man who have handled cases and has settled well over $100 million for his clients over the past 15 years. Now, why would you want to go to another attorney? I don't know why, but more than likely, in my opinion, and I'm disclaiming this, you're going to get less from that attorney. This man will not stop, okay? I used to call him the shark. All right. He's now the case handler. Why? Because he has handled so many cases. They have to change his name. So he's not the shark anymore. We already know he's like a shark when it comes to fighting for you. So right now, call the number. Remember, immigration and yes, personal injury when you get hurt. 844-774-3529. Mm -hmm. Let me drink my BioLive tea while Adam Handler takes over. Adam. Yeah. Um, that question, I wanted to answer that question as well. You know, what's that that thing you want to hear from a, from an intake. What, what are you looking for as an attorney when a client first calls you? And some of the first questions I always ask is, uh, and this is of course relating to personal injury, um, you know, did the police show up, right? The first question I want to know is, is this accident documented? If it's a car accident, is it documented uh, with a police report? If it's a construction accident, is it documented with uh, a report to your site safety supervisor or your foreman or your coworker, or if it's a trip or slip and fall, 
did anybody reach out to the property owner uh, in front of that sidewalk or the street? Because most likely under the law, they're going to be responsible if it's not the city of New York. The most important thing to get the personal injury case started the correct way is to be able to document that the accident actually happened and most importantly happened the way it really did because a lot of times you know you leave the scene of an accident then all of a sudden somebody rolls up and says to the police you're the one that ran the stop sign or you're the one that had the red light or you weren't looking and you tripped over that sidewalk flag that was misleveled or you were not paying attention at work and and, and walked off something and fell that way so if, if the accident happened and it's not your fault, we wanna make sure we preserve that story right away. And then of course, the second uh, step is medical attention. You know, did you seek help from EMS at the scene of the accident? Or did you go uh, over to the local urgent care? Because you know, personal injury case, unless you can prove the injury, you're not going anywhere. You can get into an accident, but if you're not hurt, you know, there's no money. There's no need for compensation to you and your family. You're not going to have medical bills. If you're not hurt, you're not going to be missing work. But if you are hurt, are we able to document it through some kind of legitimate a physician or nurse or first responder? Uh, and then last but not least, the third step. What's the third step? After you call the police, after you seek medical attention, David, you've been doing this long enough with me. What, what advice would you give for the third step? Uh, of that process. Well, my my third step after that is to ensure, you know, I mean, after you after you do all of that and you call, this is after you call you, after they call you, my other step would to make sure that if it's possible, this is after they call you, I'm taking it one step further to make sure that they get pictures. That's what I would do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, that is a perfect step four. And that's something we always remind people of. I get calls from people um, that just got into an accident. I've had calls of people listening to this radio show, whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon, actually listening to the Case Handler show and getting into a car accident and saying, You'll, you know, I was just listening to you. You'll never believe it. Somebody just ran into the back of, of my car. I say, hang up with me, call the police. When you can safely do so, take pictures of the damage to your car, take pictures of the damage to the other car. And, and those are cases that we've won big money for. So all of the personal injury cases, it's all about getting to the right start right away and going with the right attorney. And hopefully you believe in me and everything that we've been doing here at PPID and you're gonna have our number saved, 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPID-LAW. Once again, folks, that's Adam Handler, your case handler. Let me remind and let me get a little bit loud. If you're ever in an automobile accident, you need one man and that's the case handler, 844-774-3529. If your family, your friends, anyone that you know is ever in an accident, you need one number, and that's 844-774-3529. Once again, medical malpractice, construction accidents. A lot of my Caribbean brothers and sisters work on construction sites. A lot of you. Please, for God's sake, don't just go to some Joe Schmo attorney around the corner. You need the case handler. I can't tell you how much people falling off these scaffoldings and all of that stuff. And then you end up going to some joker attorney that is not giving it a maximum compensation. And more than likely your injury is huge. So you need a huge settlement. Call one firm PPID and make sure it's the case handler. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Nelson. I need for you to expand on declaration of sufficiency. Did self, I say it right? Dec no, declaration of self-sufficiency. Sorry, self-sufficiency. There you go. That, that's the reason why you're the attorney and I'm the <laughs> broadcaster. The guy who just gives out the number. So ladies and gentlemen, Nelson Maverick, I mean, Nelson Maverick, Nelson Maverick, the Maverick is going to expand and expound on something that came about on February the 24th. I need everyone to turn up their radios because if you screw this up, you could get put in deportation proceedings. All right, uh, Nelson, go ahead, my attorney. So basically, effective February 24th, 2020, um, USCIS is now requiring that all applicants for adjustment of status inside of the United States file what's called an I-944. It's a declaration of self-sufficiency. And basically what that is, is that the uh, sponsor petitioning uh, 
the applicant has to demonstrate that basically this applicant will not be a public charge. There's not a likelihood that this applicant would be a public charge. It's a 19 page application. It's also requiring a lot of supporting documentation. Um, you know, again, they want to see tax transcripts. They want to see proof of assets, checking account, savings account. Um, if you've ever fought for bankruptcy, if you've ever taken Medicaid, what's your highest level of education? They want to make sure that basically this person who is applying for a green card, worst case scenario, will be provided for. That again, if the person gets a green card, they will not become a public charge. They will not turn to the government for benefits. Um, again, it's, it's something new. It's something a lot of people are unfamiliar with. Filing today is a lot harder than it was previously. Um, I think public charge, Conrad, public charge has always been an issue. It's just now they've got this, this application that, again, it's, it's new. I don't know of many people who have done many of them. Um, so things have gotten a lot harder to try to do things on your own. Yeah, well, as you said, I mean, the public charge uh, hurdle has existed in immigration law from, from the very beginning. Um, it's always been necessary for intending immigrants to demonstrate that they can afford to support themselves and uh, get a job and support their family and not go on government assistance. That's always been the case. Uh, what's changed as of February 24th is that now it is a lot more difficult to prove uh, or to overcome that hurdle. Previously, if you had a job, you're paying your taxes, um, you, you, um, excuse, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, you're working, paying your taxes, uh, supporting your family. Um, basically, you su supply your tax returns, you show a job letter, you show a letter from the bank, and you're able to o overcome the hurdle. Uh, now, however, that's not enough. Now, the government is going to look behind whether or not you're working or paying your taxes. They're going to look to see what kind of benefits you received in the in, in the past. When I say the past, we're talking like just the last couple of years. That includes Section Eight, Section Eight uh, housing vouchers, or public housing that you received, or Section Nine uh, rental vouchers, or SNAP, uh, or a non non emergency Medi Medicaid. There's a whole host of different types of government benefits that you might have received in your past uh, that now will be counted against you. Um, it's a lot more difficult to overcome than it used to be. In addition, you know, it's, it's always been possible for those people that either aren't working or not making enough money in their jobs, they would get an affidavit of support from a family member or from an employer or from a friend. Um, now that, and that would usually suffice to overcome whatever uh, uh, problem you had. Now, you can still supply an affidavit of support, but that's just one factor that they look at. It does not it does not guarantee that you're going to be approved as it did before. In addition, with regard to that affidavit of support, the government is going to look to see what what type of relationship do you have with the person who's providing the affidavit. Has that person provided affidavits for other people in the past for other relatives? These are all factors that count negatively against you when you're applying. So, in 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 some. This is th this change that came about as of February 24th. It's a way for the government, uh, an additional way, a new way for them to turn you down. And so it's a way to say, no, you might qualify. You might be married to a U.S. citizen. You might never have been arrested. You might have stayed on your visa or, or not overstayed and not violated any laws. But we're still going to deny, deny your case because the person giving you that affidavit gave too many affidavits to previous family members. Or we're not going to approve your case because we see that you were living in public housing last year or that you received some kind of government benefit that you shouldn't have received that might have been okay when you received it, but today it's not. So gotcha. bottom line gotcha. is it's a lot more difficult. And as I've been saying, I will say it again, immigration is a minefield. You might have thought about doing your case previously on your own without a lawyer. You have friends that have done it in the past without a lawyer or family members that have considered doing it. Things have changed. This is a game changer. Since February 24th, if you are filing your application subsequent to that date, you are looking for major trouble when you deal with this particular aspect of immigration law. That 944 application form, don't take my word for it. Google it. Go to the USCIS.gov website. Google the 944 application and take a look at it. And you tell me, you call me back and tell me if you understand what they're asking for on those 19 pages. 
Don't even Absolutely. look at the instructions. It's another 10 pages, right? It's wow. rough. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Once again, folks, uh, before I, I, I let Nelson respond, um, this is cruising with the case handler. We have attorneys here that is ready, willing, and able to help you in the capacity of immigration. The immigration consultation is free, but you got to call before the top of the hour. I want for you to call this number now, 844-774-3529. Get in line before everyone else. Yes, we'll extend this after the top of the hour, obviously, but I want for you to get that consultation now. 844-774-3529. It's a phone consultation. It's absolutely free with an attorney. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Nelson, I'm going to let you respond, but you also got to answer this question. My mom petitioned for me um, in April 2012. It was approved. Um, it, it was approved. My son and my daughter were included. Now I pay for the kids, for my kids' visa, and once again, verbatim, affidavit of support, and send all documents. Now all the documents got approved, but my daughter was not on it anymore. What happened and why is she not on? Hey, just very quickly, actually, I want to add something to what Conrad said a couple of minutes ago. Conrad, if I'm not mistaken, also the income requirements increased as well. Yes. Right? Well, there's, so There's a poverty guideline that's issued by the government every year. It comes out in February of every year. And that, that they determine the poverty guideline by how many people are in the family. And there's a certain number, um, uh, a certain dollar amount that you're required to earn mm -hmm. each year to overcome that poverty guideline. Yes. Right. So before squeeze where, you know, if you were single and you were petitioning your spouse, you had to show $20,000. Now right. you have to show $40,000. That sucks. In income. Right. So they've made, obviously they're, they're making it harder. Um, to answer this question, I will assume this person is an adult, right? And yep, yep. what are they in Jamaica? Are they in the United States? Sounds like they're actually in the United States. Um, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. It doesn't seem that way. Based um, on the way the question is worded, it sounds like they're actually not in the United States. My guess is, I'm sorry, Nelson. My guess is the, uh, the reason the daughter didn't come is because she turned 21. If it sounds like this person is an adult, uh, either uh, adult child of a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, I'll be, right. I'll be a citizen. That's why the case has taken as long as it has. In that type of category, you can bring accompanying children with you on your case. You don't need a separate petition, but the children have to be under 21 when they're coming. Not when you file in 2012. Today in 2020, they have to demonstrate that they're under 21. My guess is that girl turned 21 before her visa interview and therefore has been excluded. Now, there are some exceptions. There's, there's something called that's CSPA, which allows for a calculation um, to see whether or not that child is still, she could be 23, but under the law, she could still be considered 21 under the CSPA in certain circumstances. My guess is she turned 21 and that's why they excluded her. All right. You got 30 seconds to answer this one. I'm a permanent resident and I filed an I-130 application for my daughter about nine months ago. Since then, she has married. Does this affect the application? Absolutely. Okay. That basically okay. destroys the application. Ends it. Terminate. You have okay. to be single. If you're a permanent resident applying for your kids, you must apply for kids that are single. Once they get married, case is over. Get it. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Conrad Pollock, Nelson Madrid, the immigration attorneys. Right now, do you want to speak with them off the air privately and confidentially? You don't want anyone to know your business. Call them right now, off the air, privately and confidentially. Set up an appointment with them. The number for the immigration attorneys at PPID, all compliments of cruising with the case handler, is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529, 844-PPID-LAW. What happens now, Adam Handler? What happens now? We switch over to Facebook Live. We're already on Facebook Live right now. <clears throat> and if you're not on Facebook Live, when we switch over, go to the case handler page, go to Squeeze's page, go to PPISD's page, like the page, follow the page. You'll see another half hour of, of, of four very good looking men uh, give you very good advice. 
Uh, so we, we appreciate you listening. 93.5. We love you. I love you. The community has embraced us. We're embracing you back. That's why we're giving these free consultations out for as long as we need to, to make sure that everybody knows there's attorneys out there that do it a much different way than you're used to. There's attorneys out there that care, will treat you like family, not just like a file. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And we'll speak to you tomorrow morning, 830. We got Greg Pinto, the criminal attorney on with us, going to school you on what you can do to protect yourself if, God forbid, you're ever accused uh, of a crime. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Handler, the case handler. Uh, right now, we are on Facebook. And I want for you all to place your questions there. We got Tracy Spence, Alyssa, and Ruthie, of course, out there fielding the <clears> questions, <throat> getting them over to me. I want to say thanks to that team. Got to say great teams working together. This is all for you, the community. Wherever you are, remember, immigration is federal. Here in the tri-state area, Adam Handler, the man who has settled well over $100 million for clients, love saying that, okay, is ready to represent you in New Jersey and, yes, New York. Call them now at 844-774-3529. Going to uh, ask one more immigration question, then I need Adam Handler to actually talk about a true success story. And Adam, remind me tomorrow, we need to get a true, true success story on 93.5 FM, all right? Uh, exactly. Let's get to this one. Uh, this one says, good morning. It's from Devine TN. It says, good morning. I did my Stokes interview, had an attorney present. She said, we did great back in February, 2020. They updated the I-130 about a week and a half, still waiting on the I-485 to be approved. Um, I-30... Um, no says approved now says, I don't know what that means. And I don't know if you guys can figure that one out. So, so basically a Stokes interview is typically, typically a second interview with immigration. That's when they separate you. The reason for a Stokes interview is basically either you have insufficient evidence to demonstrate the bona fides of the marriage, or there was red flags at the time of your initial interview. So immigration had you come back a second time. The Stokes interview is typically done in conjunction with an I-130. So if her I-130 is approved, that means the Stokes interview went well. Um, if her adjustment is still pending, it's not something that's unusual. It's not something I would necessarily worry about at the moment. I mean, again, if her Stokes interview just happened in February, we're in May, um, I would imagine her application should be approved shortly. Just be patient. Okay. All right. Once again, um, ladies and gentlemen, remember you can retain the firm after you get that free consultation, 844-774-3529. Call them, ladies and gentlemen, and let them help you out. Adam Adler, let's switch over to personal injury and let's talk a little bit about a true success story. This happens to be someone who actually retained Adam Handler to handle the case. Him being the case handler, he did, I'm quite sure, and has settled the case and made someone happier all right adam uh yes man I, i'm gonna just share the, the share the screen if i can uh be permitted to do so excellent yeah so listen personal injury is all about results right Th that's just the way it is actually all all cases for an attorney is all about, is about results we are a result-based business um we don't bill hourly uh, we bill by the task we also <clears throat> as far as personal injury go, um, have contingency fee, meaning I get paid if and only if I'm successful for you. So although we can never, never guarantee a successful result, no lawyer should or could ever do that. Um, we like to post uh, these wonderful stories regarding personal injury. And this is, this is one case I haven't thought about in a while. Um, a couple of years old, I mean, we've got literally hundreds of these, but I'm trying to mix it up a little bit. This is Clarence. Uh, Clarence was uh, a cab driver uh, at JFK dropping off um, a, a passenger. And as he's pulling out of the parking spot to drop off passengers, another car comes along and clips him. The car was not paying attention, <clears throat> was found to be 100% at fault. And we were able, as a result, to get this guy uh, the full amount of insurance that, that vehicle had. That was 100000 Now, you see here in this picture that he's wearing a, a soft collar. Uh, that was not a prop. He had just had uh, a surgery to his neck only uh, a week or so before the case settled. 
And once he had the surgery, obviously it was game over and we were able to get him the maximum 100,000. So I remember how much pain he was in that day. But if you can see this smiling face, I mean, my smile is oh, yeah. making up for <laughs> both of us, but he's smiling there because he knew that justice was served. He knew that he got the maximum amount of money he could have possibly gotten in this case. And we got it literally within weeks of the accident. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the best way I'm measured is not only the a successful result, but in a timely manner. Nobody needs any case, especially a personal injury case, dragging out for months and months or years and years, which sometimes they do. If the money's not right, for example, if they were going to offer us 50 grand in this case, yeah, you bet your ass I'd be fighting for a couple of years. But uh, as a sign of respect to, to my practice and, and what the insurance companies know we do, they don't play around. They may try that with other law firms, you know, maybe those firms that come up to you at the scene of the accident or in the emergency room, because they know those are second rate law firms that will probably take less than full value for their client's injuries. It doesn't work here at PPID like that. It doesn't work like that with the case handler, with the case handler team. In fact, there was an expression I used to love back in that day, homie, don't play that, right? You're going, you're going to give us the full amount. Otherwise, we're going to keep fighting. And, you know, the quote speaks for itself. You know, Clarence said here, you're going to, you are going to the best service with Adam Handler. No matter when I contacted Adam, he was good at responding back. Adam and his team did great. My friend recommended me to Adam since he had a good experience when he was a client. And now I recommend everyone to the case handler too. Um, you know, it's not, again, about the big, big money because it, that's a large part of it. But <clears throat> when you hear these quotes about feeling respected, or getting a call back from your attorney right away. Those are things that we pride ourselves on. And those are the things that really set our firm and our practice apart from most of the law firms out there. It's not only the dedication to the result, but it's, it's the way we handle ourselves down that road. And smiling faces all around, good things, life-changing money for life-changing injuries. But you have to remember, one chance, no reduce. One chance, one choice. Your case handler team here for you. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. I like the smiling face, but I like the check better. Oh, yeah. Those I, checks are humongous. <laughs> People want yeah. to know, how do you bring those checks to the bank? Yeah. Well, those checks don't go to the bank. You, 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 you get a smaller version to take to the bank. Right. Once again, folks, it's what I talk about each and every single day, seven days a week on this, um, on my program on 93.5 FM and also on Facebook, where, you know, you need a good attorney to represent you in every capacity when some issue arises. And, you know, Adam Handler, a personal injury attorney, has proven himself. And you can check out his track record on thecasehandler.com. That's thecasehandler.com. Check out all the checks. Check out all the testimonies. Check out all the the true success stories, very, very important for you to check that out. Once again, it's called Cruising with the Case Handler, where we talk on personal injury and immigration. We're going to flip it back over now to um, immigration, where we actually get some more questions answered here. Question, how long does the H-1B process take? I'm looking for a job and I will need a visa. And this kind of visa seems like my most likely option, but I'm concerned about the time frame. I need to start working soon. Well, he, uh, that person should be concerned about the time frame because he missed it. <laughs> um, <laughs> H-1Bs are subject to an annual quota um, of 60, roughly 65,000 visas per year. Um, and that quota opens up on April 1st. Um, I, I'm simplifying things, but basically uh, he needs an employer to sponsor him. It has to be in a professional capacity. Typically that professional capacity is a position requiring a four-year college degree or more. Um, and the employer, not him, the employer offering him a job, a U.S. employer offering that person a job, must submit the petition to the Immigration Service the first week of April. Uh, considering that we're now in May, uh, he's missed the boat. Um, he will have to wait until next year in order to apply for an H-1. There might be other options for him, though, depending on what kind of work he does. Uh, depending on what he's looking to do here in the United States, if he's here, if he's not here, I would suggest that person contact us uh, and I can Absolutely. go through the options with him. H-1B is a limited option. It's a great visa if he could get it, but they're limited. And as I said, 
you have to wait till next year. And it's weird here. Here's another one. Um, I applied for an H-1B visa, but I have not received approval yet. Does this likely mean that I have missed out this year? Is there well, any way for me to come to the U.S. and start the job I was offered and apply again next year? Well, again, the H-1, popular, popular topic this morning, huh? Um, the H-1 <laughs> process just began. Nobody's been approved yet. Uh, typically, H-1s have always been eligible for premium processing. What that means is you can submit an additional fee of $1,445 to the Immigration Service, wow. and they will expedite the processing of your application. That was suspended this year for various reasons. Um, so H-1s are taking a few months. Um, thing is, even if he filed and even if it gets approved, the H-1B does not begin until October 1st of this year. So he gets approved. Let's say he gets approved tomorrow. He can't start working until October 1st anyway. If he's in Jamaica, he's not getting that visa until sometime in September. So the answer to his question, no, he can't come here in advance. Even if it does get approved, he's going to have to wait. He'll, once he's approved, he speaks to whoever did the application for him. He'll be getting his visa sometime in mid-September. Hopefully, he'll come here and start working on, on October 1st. Absolutely. Once again, folks, make sure you actually tune in to us each and every single weekday at 8.30 a.m. Got another question here. But remember, dial this number, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Make that link. Make that call, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, you know, reach out to the attorneys, get that free consultation. All right. My brother petitioned for me with an I-130 application and it was recently approved. I am now sending in an I-485, okay? Back in 1980 when I was, okay, back in 1980 when I was only 21 years old, I applied for an amnesty program. I was given a work permit. In 2006, however, I was denied an extension of the work permit because my lawyer lost the amnesty case in court. Is this going to affect my I-485 application? Okay, he may have other issues. If his brother lost his case in court, then that means he has a removal order. Um, so I'm not sure he would be eligible for adjustment of status with a removal order. This is something I would strongly recommend he have an attorney look into. Um, if he files for adjustment of status with a removal order, his case will be denied and he will lose all of the filing fees and any monies paid to immigration. It, a, it sounds to me a little more complicated than what he may know. Conrad? Yeah, an additional issue there. Um, if, it's, if his brother is a citizen applied for him, that's a fourth preference case. Um, in order to apply for adjustment of status, he has to be lawfully in the United States. He has to be in lawful status. He might have entered with a visa 20, 30, 40 years ago, whatever it is. Uh, but that visa probably expired by now. Um, and if he's out of status, he can't adjust status. There's one exception to that rule. It's called 245I, uh, which used to exist. The law expired in 2001. Uh, if he's covered by that, then he can still apply for adjustment of status. But it doesn't sound like he is. So he's got some problems. And as Nelson said, he should definitely be contacting us and with more. He needs, we need more information. And it looks like he's, a, he's asking for trouble going the direction he's going. Right. And, and once again, folks, remember, it's a free consultation. So at least have a conversation with Conrad Pollock. Have a consultation, a consultation with Nelson Madrid. Call, ask, talk with them off the air on a phone call. On, on a phone call. The number, once again, is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. What do you have to lose? Get a free consultation. And then, of course, with a case like this, I would suggest, let me get my face up in the camera here, okay? I would suggest you hire them, all right? Okay, because you're going to screw yourself. All right, let me just tell you that. You know, maybe Conrad and Nelson won't yell at you and, and Adam, but I am telling you, you're going to screw yourself, all right? You know, Squeeze, so, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, just to interject very quickly, we've been getting a lot of phone calls from people who have done their cases on their own, mm -hmm. and either they haven't heard back from immigration, they haven't gotten any receipts, they, they don't know what the next steps are. At that, you know, at this point in, in, in particular, it's very <laughs> difficult to get an attorney involved, right? Because now if I were to call, immigration is going to say, I don't know who you are. Well, I'm a lawyer, but you're not their lawyer. They, your name does not appear on any of these forms. So, so it's very difficult for an attorney to get involved so late in the game. 
you know, and chances are a lot of these people may have to refile and pay new filing fees on all of this because something went wrong. And unfortunately, it's a very common issue. So or, I just even, or, even, or even worse, they might have said things on the forum that they shouldn't have said, or they might have made admissions on their applications that they shouldn't yep. have made, you know, and their, pro their case may be, it might be too late to help them. So, you know, again, you know, I, I, I hate to sound self-serving and it's just, it's so important, especially these days. Immigration is a minefield. It really is. You take the wrong step, boom, you get blown up. I, yep. I, I can't, I can't stress that situation enough, right? You need a lawyer when you do your immigration case these days. I don't care if your brother did it five years ago without a lawyer, things have changed. We are living in a new world. The Trump administration is a new world. Immigration is a minefield. Absolutely. And, and Nelson, remind me tomorrow, when you get on, the first thing I want you to talk about is exactly what you just said. A lot of people are doing their cases by themselves and getting screwed, all right? And how hard it is for an attorney now to step in and represent them. So you don't want to be doing your case yourself. I mean, if Conrad is saying you, you most likely don't want to do it, no, you don't want to do it yourself. You don't, all right? Take, ladies and gentlemen, why would I want to do that? Probably the most important thing to me in my life in your situation would be my status here in the United States, and I am going to take a chance. Let me let me put my phone down. I would put off certain things, get my priorities together and invest in that one thing, ladies and gentlemen. You think about it. This is about you staying in the United States, working legally, having legal residence in the United States. And you're going to say, you know what? Let me uh, do it myself. This is probably the most important thing in your life. Why would you want to screw it up? Why? Listen, this is you. This is your family. You need to find the right mind to understand that your priority, this is at the top of the priority list. All right? You know the situation you're in. If you got to save up for it, you got to do whatever you got to do for it. Don't screw around with it. Don't do it yourself. Don't tell me that you don't have the money, okay? and, and, and squeeze, because it's going to cost you more later. If I can interrupt, because you know, I, I was born in the United States. I, I've have you know nothing to worry about, and you know it's amazing how some people hit, I guess, like the celestial lottery by being born within these borders. But if you're not born within the borders and you want to be here and you want to be productive and you want to bring your family over and you want to change generations to come of your bloodline, then you've got to get this right right now and you got to get it straightened out and to say that you're going to do it yourself because you don't have the money um is is a really sad way to look at it because why are we out here we're, we're right now we're giving absolutely free consultations with respect to immigration and we're also working with you with respect to payments and, and, and we couldn't make it any easier for you to feel comfortable that you have great attorneys working on your case Right. And, and that's what we're stressing back. And that's what we're stressing. That's what I keep saying. We're, we're not doing this because we feel like being up early every morning on the radio for an hour and on Facebook. We're doing it because we want to give back to the community. We want to give back to the community that's embraced us. It's all about, you know, good vibes and, and karma and, and, and reaching out to people that have supported us through the years. And now we're saying, hey, you know what? We're going we're gonna to return the favor. We're going to do a good deed. We're going to help you and your family really change things for the better. So you'd be, as much as you'd be a fool to represent yourself, you'd be a fool not to take advantage uh, of what we're offering here. And it all starts with that phone call. You got to just give us a call. You've got nothing to lose. The consultation is free. Personal injury, the consultation is free. Even hiring me, no money out of pocket. At least I can understand you got to pay a few bucks to, to get your immigration your immigration case going. But for personal injury, I'm on a, a contingency fee. I'm not paid until I win your case, if and only if. So there's no risk to you, no reason why you shouldn't have what you believe to be the best possible attorney fighting for you and your family for that own, one and only chance. And it's pretty much the same thing for immigration, the one and only chance, because if you screw it up, whether it's the, um, yep. the, 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 the declaration of self-sufficiency 
or it, it's it's petitioning for somebody that's already petitioned, you know, petitioning, you, you having somebody petition for you and somebody else has already petitioned for you. There's a million different ways to die. Conrad uses the, the expression, the minefield. And that's true. You take one misstep, boom, it's done. So before you start dancing in the fields of danger, give us a ring, let us know how we can help you. And if we can help you, we're going to say so. We don't want to waste your time. We certainly hope you don't want to waste ours. But if we can help you, think about what you'll be doing, not only for yourself, but for your kids, their grandkids, and their children. Truly yeah. unbelievable. This is what I'm talking about, man. That's the case, Adler. That's my attorney there, okay? The man who has settled well over $100 million for his clients. I love saying that. Oh, man, that's, this is great. Once again, folks, if you're just joining us, this show is called Cruising with the Case Handler. The Case Handler happens to be Adam Handler. I am David Squeeze Anik here. We do this show weekdays on 93.5 FM in New York. And ladies and gentlemen, it happens at 8.30 a.m. Um, on the weekdays, 7 p.m. on Saturdays, and 12 noon on Sundays. I have two more questions, gentlemen. One for each of you, immigration attorneys at PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Desico, and then we'll conclude, all right? Uh, this one is for Nelson. It says, I was arrested for a DUI, and I see someone just called. Okay, so they're, they're listening. Good, they're calling. All right, I was arrested for a DUI last week, but the police did not realize that I have no documents. I have to go in front of the judge next week. Will they find out about my status? Can they deport me? If I don't go to court, what will happen? Nelson Madrid, Maverick, immigration attorney, what is the answer to that? So, you know, of course, uh, my follow-up question would be where exactly was he arrested? Um, you know, and in my opinion, I think that's important uh, because certain communities are more immigrant friendly than others. Um, being arrested for a DWI now um, can get him arrested. Uh, basically, immigration finds that a DWI is, a DWI conviction, that is, is a danger to public safety. Um, and they're concerned that, you know, look, as a judge once told one of my clients, do you want me to believe that those are the only two times you've drink, you know, you've drank and driven a car. You know, if you've been arrested twice for DWI, chances are you've done it on more than two occasions. You just got caught twice. Um, so it's something you want to be careful with. Um, you definitely do want to go to court. Don't not go to court um, because that could only further complicate things. You know, now you could have a, a bail jumping or a bond jumping for not appearing. You could have a warrant. And now you're really gonna piss somebody off. And ultimately they could call immigration on you and immigration could pick you up and put you into removal proceedings. You right. know, and, 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 just and, jump in there, Squeeze. Um, yeah. you know, our firm also handles criminal uh, matters. And in fact, we have a criminal attorney, Greg Pinto, coming on the show tomorrow. I, I don't know- Criminal if defense attorney. Criminal yeah. defense criminal attorney. Defense. Thank you, I keep forgetting <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, anyway, we have a criminal defense attorney coming on the show tomorrow. And I would say to that person, you might want to call back again tomorrow, and he could give specifics in terms of what the risks are with his char charges uh, and what could happen if he doesn't show up. Fact is, he does need to show up. If he doesn't show up in court, that's a major mistake. He's going to be making an additional mistake beyond getting beyond getting a, a pulled over in the first place. Uh, but again, we have a criminal defense attorney, uh, attorney coming on tomorrow morning who's going to be answering questions like that. So you might want to tune in again tomorrow. Greg Pinto is the real deal. Absolutely. And, and I just wanted to jump in and say, look, I, I, I mean, look at it this way. You're asking this question here on Facebook, right? Fine. But we are giving out a number and we're simply saying, call for a free consultation. Now, if you are arrested and you have access to these attorneys, wouldn't you want to just call them and speak with them? Also, why would you want to go to court and represent yourself? especially in your position. Why would you want to do that? All right? Now, I'm not lambasting you or beating you up, but I just want for you and everyone else out there, let's start common sense, you know? Don't screw it up. And sometimes I have to be this unorthodox to get you to understand that you need to do the right thing, my people, because not doing the right thing and me not lambasting and beating you up 
you're now going to probably end up in deportation. Go to the attorneys, talk with them. Okay, it's hard for them to even actually answer every detail of your question on air, off, air, I mean, on air, on this Facebook or 93.5. So why don't you talk to them privately? So just call the number. Every one of you that's watching this Facebook, I realize we're getting more calls from the Facebook now, but every one of you, it would behoove me not to tell you my favorite word to call them now, 844-774-3529. Anything with US immigration, you only need PPID. Anything with personal injury, you only need PPID. You need the case handler. So dial this number, 844 844- 774-3529. I'm sorry I got to beat up on you guys, but come on, make the call. It's a free consultation. All right. I, I get, I am very passionate and I'm more concerned for you. All right. Because you need to do the right thing. And I don't want to see you get thrown out of this country. All right. So make the call 844-774-3529. Here's one for uh, Conrad. And then we can conclude with Adam. I am waiting for my green card application to be processed. Let me restart all over. I am waiting for my green card application to be processed and it has already taken more than a year. I need to travel for my work and I am worried that I will lose my job if I cannot go on this trip. I am also afraid to tell my boss that my green card has not been granted yet. Do I have to tell my boss? He's not my sponsor. Um, well, first, I, I just wanted to add something about the last gentleman uh, or, or female, whoever called about uh, that criminal issue. You know, it's a lot easier to deal with a situation like that from an immigration perspective before there's a conviction or before there's a a guilty plea. Uh, That person definitely wants to go to court and that person definitely wants to bring an attorney with him to court, wants to speak to an, at least speak to an attorney before he goes to court, before he takes a plea, which, you know, he might take a plea and pay a fine and walk away, no jail time. And then when he goes to apply for his green card, finds out, uh uh-oh, I made a mistake, oh. and an immigration lawyer tells him because of that little guilty plea that you took and didn't pay, you just paid a fine, you didn't go to jail, but you took a guilty plea of the wrong charge. And now, sorry, I can't get you a green card because if we apply, immigration is going to put you into deportation proceedings and you're going to be going back to your country. So that person really needs to speak to an attorney. Always, always. Uh, getting back to this person, I'm assuming they applied for adjustment of status. Uh, I mean, there were no details there. I understand his employer didn't sponsor him. If he applied for adjustment of status, he might be eligible to apply for what's called advanced parole. That's permission to travel, uh, which, again, depends on the circumstances, facts of the case. But if he applied for adjustment of status, he can apply for advanced parole. That's permission to travel. Typically takes three or four months to get it. Needs a reason. Um, You can't just say, I need the permission, I want to go. You need an emergency. You need a family emergency. Somebody, your your grandmother is in the hospital on her deathbed. Uh, Your your mother is getting remarried or your sister is about to give birth. Those are just examples. They may not qualify as as emergencies these days. Uh, A business emergency, uh, your your company is sending you overseas and it's there are millions millions of dollars at stake in terms if if you don't show up. you need to apply for advanced parole, assuming you qualify. There are details there, are facts that we require in order to make that determination. Thank you. All right, I'll follow up on one of the questions here. All right, and uh, you know, I, once again, folks, you know, we we are broadcasting on multiple Facebook pages. I have well over twenty-one pages, and we're on the PPIDs page. We're on the Case Handler page. I want to say thanks once again to Tracy, and Ali, and Ruthie for, of course, you know, facilitating this. And making sure that I get all these questions to read off to the attorneys, Conrad Pollock, we, whom you just heard, and Nelson Maverick, and also, of course, talk with Adam Handler on personal injury. But this is a follow up for the question where this lady said, My mom petitioned for me April 2012. It was approved by my son. This is the one that was a little bit weird. And my daughter were included. Now I pay for my kids' visa affidavit of support and sent all documents. Now all the documents are approved, but my daughter was not on it anymore. What happened? Why she's not? And it says here with the follow-up, Linda says, blessed, good morning. How can I get my daughter to accompany me to travel? My mom petition, it was all documents were submitted. Hold on, no, 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 no. Again, um, the, I'm assuming her daughter turned 21 and that's why they didn't, that she was disqualified from the application. 
again waiting on an appointment to go to the embassy yeah there is what's called the cspa child status protection act um mm -hmm. under that cspa depending on when that application was filed initially in 2012 and when it was approved it may be possible if she's already turned 21 under the law she could be considered so it was approved before she was 21. doesn't matter that yeah. doesn't matter what's important is what is her age today on the day of her visa interview? How old she was when they filed for? She could have been 15 back then. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What matters is today, all right? And I would need to know details in terms of, again, what I was just saying. When was it filed? What date was it approved? How old is that child? What's her birthday? So on and so forth. With the, with that information, I could very quickly answer that question. Gotcha. Please, just all very right. quickly, just mm -hmm. I want to jump in. Um, also, mm -hmm. if the mother were able to legalize her status, she could eventually petition for her child. That'll take a long time. Right, but that's another option. It's an option, yeah. right. Right, right, right. That'll that's take the reason years. why. Yeah, That'll that's the reason why I love you guys, man. Always, true you team, know. A true team effort, you know. A true team effort. I mean, this is what we want, ladies and gentlemen, for you. Okay, they're literally passionate about finding a way for you. We're so fighting with ourselves to make sure we have the right answer for you. How do you like that? There you go. So once again, this is the reason why we have cruising with the case handler. We've got attorneys on board in the capacity of obviously immigration and obviously personal injury. Right yes, now, we're please, please, let me show. stop you for a second. I want to get this point out. You know, mm -hmm. and just following up what you guys were just saying, you know, our firm has been around for a very long time, uh, 30 plus years uh, in its current form. You know, we're not some guy you walk down the street and then you, you go, go in and there's this one lawyer sitting there answering his own telephones and making his own coffee and making his own copies. We have a firm of many lawyers, many staff. We have a lot of people at our office. This is a collaborative, eff a collaborative effort. You see it for yourself. I say something, I might have missed a point. Nelson's there to jump in. Same thing. Adam might have missed something, or Nelson might have missed something, and I jump in. You know, this is how we operate. This is what you're witnessing right now is exactly how we work when we're in our offices, doing our cases, working for our clients. We're all chiming in. Nobody is worried about, oh, well, you know, why did you say that? I should have, you know, everybody is working together for a joint goal for the successful outcome for our clients that's how we do things at ppid yeah wow. it's, well it's really a team effort and uh connor is absolutely right i'll be damned if he makes his own coffee <laughs> <laughs> wow man i love this i love this, this is my, my, my secretaries are out there cracking up right now i know it. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great show. It's a Monday, but it's been a phenomenal show. I love the fact that the questions keep coming in, and um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit it. One little confession that I want to make, ladies and gentlemen, we could actually take all these questions on the air live with you, but here's what: we get so many questions. If I get one person on the air, and you notice, Adam. That person could eat up all the time that we have, okay? And only one question get answered. And then, guess what? They accost me in the street and like, squeeze, what up, man? I didn't get my question in, you know? <laughs> you know, so, so listen, all right? I love the, the format. I love what's happening here. I love the fact that, yeah, occasionally we'll pop a couple of questions or so on the air live. You know, some days we'll do a show for at least an hour. And when we do that, we'll just pop them on. But Remember, you have a free consultation waiting for you. Call them on the air, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. For me, before what I want to say in adding to what the attorneys have said is, yes, you're getting the free consultation, but please, and I'm saying this passionately without any humor, please retain them. All right, don't do your case yourself. Don't, not in these times. You know, immigration is truly genuinely a minefield. It's time for you to have an attorney handle your case and it should only be one firm. Pollock, Pollock, Isaac and DeSico. If you get hurt in an accident also, please don't go to another attorney. You may be listening to attorneys on radio stations.